We're going to look at z-scores. The symbol for the z-score is z, and the formula is to take an observation, subtract the mean, and then divide by a standard deviation. If you're doing this for a sample, it would be x minus the mean x-bar divided by s. If you're doing this for the population, it would be x minus mu divided by sigma. Positive z-scores indicate that a value fell above the mean, and negative z-scores indicate that a value fell below the mean. For example, if this is your x distribution and this is the mean of x, a value that falls above the mean would have a z-score that was positive, and a value that falls below the mean would have a z-score that is negative. The z-score basically indicates how far above or below the mean an observation is. For example, you are applying for a job at two companies. Company A offers stuttering salaries with an average of $32,000 and a standard deviation of $4,000. Company B offers starting salaries with an average of $32,000 and a standard deviation of $9,000. From which company are you more likely to get an offer of $40,000 or more? $40,000 would be the uh, value of your observation X. Right now, companies A and B are on two different sets of scales, one a scale of 4,000 and the other a scale of 9,000. To put them on the same scale, we could form the z-score. The z-score for company A would be the observation 40,000 minus the average of 32,000 divided by the standard deviation of 4,000. The z-score for company B would be the observation 40,000 minus the average of 32,000 divided by the standard deviation of 9,000. For company A, we see that the z-score comes out to be 2. And for company B, we see that the z-score comes out to be 0.89. Both these values are positive, so we know that the observation is above the mean. Just to show you what we're talking about, the mean for both companies is 32,000 and the observation x was 40,000. It fell above the mean, so the z-score fell above zero for both of these observations. The second thing that the z-score tells us is how far were the observations from the mean. If this is the value of the mean, company A says that 40,000 would be two tick marks away from the mean value. Company B says that it would be 0.89 of a tick mark away from the mean value. Because company B is closer to the average value, we know that company B is more likely to give the offer of 40,000 or more. There's a rule that lets us determine whether or not we have an outlier. We know an observation is an outlier if the z-score is less than negative 3 or if the z-score is greater than positive 3. To prove why this is the case, think about the empirical rule and apply it to the z-distribution. The z-distribution is centered at 0, and if you go 3 tick marks to the right and 3 tick marks to the left, that'll take you up to the number 3 and down to the number negative 3. The empirical rule says that within 3 tick marks below and 3 tick marks above the center of the distribution, there will be 99.7% of your observations. That means if a value falls down here or up here, it will probably be an outlier because the probability of this occurring would be very small. In fact, the probability of an observation occurring on either one of these tails would be 100 minus 99.7. And then the probability for it occurring just on the lower tail or just on the upper tail would be that divided by 2, which shows that there is a 0 .0015 chance of it falling just on the upper tail or just on the lower tail. A probability this small would cause an observation bigger than 3 or negative 3 to be called an outlier. What I just showed you is called the standard normal distribution. It's centered at 0 with tick marks of size 1. The standard normal distribution is a special case of the normal distribution. The normal distribution is centered at mu and its tick marks are size sigma. For instance, this would be mu plus sigma, and this would be a mu minus sigma. You add the standard deviation or subtract it to get the different tick marks. This is what we call the x-curve. 
Notationally, we say that x is normally distributed with a center at mu and a standard deviation of sigma. And for the standard normal curve, we see that z is normally distributed with the mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. It's a special case. We're going to start calculating probabilities. The first type of problem will give you a value of the variable x and then ask for a percent as an answer. The way you work these out are your x, z, table steps. So I'll keep referring back to x, z, table in our steps. You're going to have four different cases that the problems could fall in. The first case is a less than case. You would have an observation here on the x curve and you would be finding the probability of being less than this observation. We'll be using something called the standard normal table to do this. And the standard normal table always writes term, things in terms of being less than. So to use the table, since this is already set up as a less than, we're good to go. The next case would be the probability that x is greater than an observation. On the picture, it would be the probability of being at this number x or bigger on the capital X, the random variable x distribution. To look this up in the table, however, you would have to look up the lower tail end because the table only gives you from a number and down. So what you're going to have to do is a prep step. You're going to have to say the entire curve represents 100% or 1. And then out of this 1, you want to subtract off the pink. That's being less than an observation. And when you subtract that out, it would leave over the black area, the probability of being greater. The third type of problem would be an equal to case, the probability that x equals a specific number. And this is always 0 for continuous data. The last case is a between. It's the probability that x falls between two observations. We'll call it x1 and x2. Remember that the table is only going to give you a value from a number and smaller. So to work this out, what you'll have to do is find the probability of being at x2 or smaller. That's this. Then from here, you'll find the probability of being smaller than x1. That's this. When you find this probability, you'll subtract it away. So minus the probability that x is less than x1. When you perform this subtraction, that portion disappears. And so you're left with the shaded area, the between area that you were looking for. Let's try working out some examples. The eastern indigo snake has a smoothly scaled stout body that is shiny blue-black in color. Orange may be present on the throat and the sides of the head. Indigo snakes are threatened due to habitat deconstruction and capture for the pet trade. The eastern indigo is North America's largest native snake. Let us say that the length of a mature indigo snake is normally distributed with a mean 6 and standard deviation 2 feet. We know a random variable is measuring length. And we know that this random variable has a normal distribution with a mean at 6 and a standard deviation of 2. Eventually, you'll see me write this as normal 6, 2, and I'll expect you to know that 6 is the mean and 2 is the standard deviation. For part A, we want to know what percentage of eastern indigo snakes are smaller than 3 feet we're looking for the probability that the snake length is less than 3 feet. And you can say less than or less than or equal to. It'll work out the, the same either way. On the x distribution, the center is at 6, and the standard deviation is 2. So we could add 2 and subtract 2. Finding the probability that it's 3 or smaller is what we're looking for on the x distribution. Our steps to solve this problem are to write it in terms of x, switch to a z-score, and then look up a value in the table. Right now I've written this in terms of x. And if you notice on the x distribution, this is 1 and about half a tick mark below the mean of 6. So just remember, 1 and a half tick marks. So step 2, we're going to convert to the z. To go from the x to the z, you need to take the observation of 3, subtract the mean of 6, and divide by the standard deviation of 2. This simplifies 
to negative 1.5. Remember how I said that on the x distribution, 3 was 1 and a half tick marks below the mean? Well, on the z curve, which is centered at 0, we see the negative 1.5 is right here, and we're now looking for the probability of being less than 1.5 on the z distribution. So what I'm trying to point out is the probability of being 3 or smaller on the x curve is the same as the probability of being negative 1.5 or smaller on the z curve. Let's go back and check our steps. We wrote this in terms of x, we've converted to a z, and now we're ready to go to the table to get our probability. Remember our z score came out to negative 1.50. The once position and the tenths position will always fall along this side of the table. The hundredth position will always fall on this portion of the table and there will always be a placeholder in the tenth position right here when you're looking along this part of the table. So to find this number I'm going to negative 1.5 0 and then lining it up and I see that the answer is 0 .0668. So there's about a six and a half percent chance that a snake would be smaller than three feet. What percentage of eastern indigo snakes are longer than six and a half feet? This is the probability that the length of the snake x is greater than 6.5 feet. You could also say greater than or equal to. On the x distribution, remember we're centered at six with standard deviation two. This would be saying what's the probability that we're at six and a half or bigger. Remember, though, that the table will not give you the probability of being at a number and bigger. It will give you the probability of being at a number and smaller. So we're going to have to do a prep step. We're going to have to convert this to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 6.5. We've completed the step right in terms of x. We're now ready to write this in terms of z. To convert from x to z, you need to take the observation of 6.5, subtract the mean of 6, and divide by the standard deviation of 2. This is 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0 0.25. On the z curve, we would be looking at the probability of being at 0.25 or, small, or larger. And to find that, you would say take the entire curve, or 100%, subtract off being 0.25 or smaller, and when you subtract out the pink, it leaves over the black. Notice that from 6, this is about 0.25 of a standard deviation above it. And from 0, you've traveled 0.25 distance. We've completed the z step. We're now ready to go to the table to get our final answer. We'll put that number right here. So here's the table, and we're looking up 0.25. The ones in tenth position will always fall here. The hundredth position will always fall here with a placeholder in the tenth position. So we should be looking up 0 0.05. Lining these up, we can see that the probability is 0.5987. One minus this gives us a final answer of 0 0.4013, or 40.13% chance that a snake would be longer than six and a half feet. What percentage of eastern indigo snakes are between 4.6 and 8 feet? On the x-curve, this would be the probability of being between 4.6 and 8. But we should be aware by now that the normal distribution won't give us a between probability. It'll only give us the probability of being at a number and smaller. So if I look up the probability that x is less than 8, here's 8, I want the probability of being less than this, and the table will give us from 8 and down. And then I subtract off the probability that x is less than 4. Here's 4. And then I subtract off the probability that x is less than 4.6. So here's 4.6. That's the probability of being less than it. Subtracting this away, it leaves over the portion in the middle, which is the probability that we were interested in. We've written this in terms of x. We're now ready to do our next step and convert to a z. 
This is the probability that z is less than or equal to observation 8 minus the mean of 6 divided by the standard deviation of 2 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to a different observation of 4.6 minus the mean of 6 divided by the standard deviation of 2. Remember, I'm pulling the mean 6, the standard deviation 2 from here. Simplifying, that's the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.00 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 0 0.70. If you look at the x distribution and count the tick marks for 8, you can see that from the mean of 6, 8 is one tick mark above it. So on the z distribution, if you travel up to one tick mark, a z score of 1, it's the same as traveling to 8 on the x curve. 4.6 is below the mean of 6. As a matter of fact, it's 0.7 of a tick mark below the mean of 6. So on the z distribution, it fell right here at negative 0.7. Finding the probability of being between 4.6 and 8 on the x curve is the same thing as finding the probability of being between negative 0.7 and positive 1 on the z curve. We've completed the convert to z step. We're now ready to go to the table to get our final answers. We'll write the first one, the probability of being less than 1 here, subtract, and the probability of being less than negative 0.7 here. To get the probability of being less than 1, we need to see 1 is 1.00. The 1's and 10th position goes here, and the 100th position goes here. This probability is 0 0.8413. 0 0.70 negative. We should find the 1's and 10th position here, negative 0 0.7, and the 100th position here. This gives the probability of 0.242. Subtracting these numbers, our final answer is 0 0.5993. So there's about a 60% chance that an indigo snake will be between 4.6 feet and 8 feet long. According to Wikipedia, the indigo snake is considered to be the longest native snake species in the United States. The longest recorded specimen measured 2.8 meters, which would be 9.2 feet. What percentage of eastern indigo snakes are exactly 9.2 feet? It's very important that we consider the random variable x, which is length. We need to ask ourselves, is this a discrete or continuous variable? Length would be continuous variable. All continuous variables are exactly equal to a number with probability 0. By the way, did you know that indigo snakes are immune to rattlesnakes' venom? The second type of problem will give you a probability and ask you to calculate a value of the random variable x. The steps for these problems are reversed. We'll now do table, z, and then x. Just to give you an idea, in a less than situation, you'll know a probability. And I'll ask you to find the x value that goes with this probability. For a greater than situation, you'll know the probability of being greater than some number. And I'll be asking what is that number that you're greater than. But when you go to the table to try and figure out your answer, the table is only going to give you the probability of being from a number and down. So you'll actually be looking up the value in pink to figure out the value that you're greater than. For the between problems, You'll know that the probability of being between two observations, we'll call them x1 and x2, is a specific number. And I'll be asking you to find what is the value of each of these x's. When you're trying to figure out these problems, what you need to do is find the probabilities, that, but find it for being less than x1, and then also find it for being less than x2. Looking up each of these lower tail probabilities will give you your answer. The Florida panther is also called a puma, cougar, and mountain lion. The panther is the Florida state animal chosen by the school children of the state. The panther is a large cat, tawny to gray in color, never black. Males grow up to 7 feet in length with a weight of 130 pounds. 
Females are smaller, 6 feet in length, and weight 60 to 80 pounds. The Florida species is identified by a cowlick or swirl of fur in the middle of its back. The Florida panther has a regular flaking with patches of white hair on its neck and shoulders, and its tail has a crooked tip. Adult panthers need up to 200 square miles of territory for their home range. The species is endangered due to habitat loss and inbreeding. The territory size required by adult panthers is normally distributed with a mean of 200 square miles and a standard deviation of 20.4. It's important that we note to ourselves that the random variable we're looking at is territory size. This is a continuous random variable. We also know that this variable is normally distributed with a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 20.4. The smaller 8% of territories correspond to how many square miles? If it's the smaller 8, then I know that from here and down should be 8% or .08. And I'm looking for the number that causes this to happen. We'll look at our table for the .08. This will give us a number on the z-curve, and then we'll have to do a conversion to get the number on the x-curve or the territory size. Looking in the table for the number 0 .08, we see that it falls right here, somewhere between, somewhere between 0 .0793 and 0 .0808. This tells us that the z-score is somewhere between negative 1.4 coming this way and 1 coming up. That's for this one. So somewhere between negative 1.41 and for this one, negative 1.4 coming up 0. We're not really sure how far between these two numbers the z-score for 0 .08 is so what we'll do is take the average. We'll take negative 1.40 plus negative 1.41 and divide it by 2. The average of these two numbers is negative 1.405. So right now we're thinking that negative 1.405 has 8% of observations less than it on the Z curve. This completes the table step of looking point up 0 0.08 and the Z step of finding negative 1.405. All we need to do now is convert to the X distribution. Let's go back and get some additional theory. To convert from the Z to the X distribution, what you're going to do is solve for x in the z-score formula. So you're going to multiply by sigma. And then you're going to add mu. This will be your conversion formula. The last thing I'd like to do is flip sides of this equation. You'll need to have this equation memorized in order to solve your problems. Let's go back to our example. We can now plug in the equation to convert from z to x. We know that the x value should equal the standard deviation times the z-score plus the mean. This tells us that the correct x value is 171.338 miles squared. So 8% of the territories will be smaller than about 172 square miles. The larger 2.5% of territories correspond to how many square miles? Knowing that we're looking at larger, that tells us to shade up, and 2.5% would be 0 .025. To look this value up in the table, though, you're going to have to think of the reverse setting. You're going to have to think of being smaller than a particular value. 1 minus 0 .025 is 0.975, and this is the value you actually need to look up in the table. Coming into the table, 0.975 corresponds to a z-score of 1.9. And then coming up for the tenth position, we see that it should be a 0 0.6 right here. So 1.96. 2.5% of observations will be bigger than 1.96, and 97.5% will be smaller than it. And this is on your z-curve. So you've completed the table step of looking up 0.975 and the z step of finding the z-score 1.96. Now you need to convert to x. x is sigma z plus mu. Sigma is 20.4. The z-score was 1.96. And the territory size, or mu, was 200. 
Breaking this out, you get back 239.984. So we know that the larger 2.5% of territories will be about 240 square miles or larger. Between what two values will you find the central 95% of territory sizes? We're saying that between this number and this number, there should be about 95% or .95. To look these numbers up in the table, though, you need to know the probability of being that number or smaller. This one's going to be pretty easy to look up. To get this, take the total value under the curve, which will be 1 or 100%. Subtract out the 95% or the 0.95 you know about. That leaves over the lower and upper tail. To keep just the lower tail and get rid of the upper tail, divide it in half. That gives a lower tail probability of 0.025. Coming into the Z table, we see that 0.025 corresponds with a Z score of negative 1.9 from here and 6 from here. We're now ready to find the upper limit. To get this value, you're going to add the 0.95 from here plus the 0.025 here. That'll give you the probability of being at this number and smaller. When you add up these two numbers, that's 0.975. And the z-score associated with this is positive 1.9. And then coming up here, that's a 0.06, so positive 1.96. These are on the z-distribution. So we've completed the table steps and the z steps. We're now ready to convert to the x distribution. To get the upper value of x, we're going to take the standard deviation of 20.4, multiply it by the z-score 1.96, and add the mean of 200. This gives us an upper bound of 239.984 square miles. To get the lower bound on our territory sizes, we'll say that x is equal to sigma, times the lower bound z-score, negative 1.96, plus the mu, 200. This gives us a lower bound of 160.016 square miles. So we can say that the central 95% of territory sizes will be somewhere between 160 and about 240 square miles. Here are the works cited used for this lecture.